Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning is on the new CBN ban on uh, Forex uh, uh, to uh, Bureau, Bureau de Change operators here in Nigeria. The CBN says that there's more than 5,000 of them that have been running and there are concerns that have led to this uh, new policy and this you know, ban. And it has also directed commercial banks to take over the trade of Forex here in Nigeria. We're speaking this morning with Ayodili Balugu, a foreign exchange trader who's joining us via Zoom in Abuja. Good morning and thanks for joining us, Mr. Balugu. Good morning. Thanks for having me on the program. Great to have you. Let's first of all start with the concerns of the CBN and the reason for this uh, policy or this ban on uh, Forex uh, to BDCs. They, of course, cited uh, fraud and mismanagement of the whole process. Um, tell us about, you know, tell what you know about that and how bad it, it really is before this decision was taken. Okay. Um, over time, CBN, um, going through um, their regulatory and supervisory um, function, thinks that um, some BDCs are culpable of using their operations as a conduit for illicit forex flows and um, graft. CBN over time thinks that there has been some fraudulent actions that has passed through BDC, BDC accounts. However, what we think from, the, from this side, um, not from the regulatory side, is that if there are people, if there are operations, if there are companies that have been found as corporates, then rather than cut off the old head, rather than sanction the old, um, the old body of BDC operators, why not pick out those people, those operations, those BDC companies, and then sanction them rather than cutting out everybody as a whole? Well, well, do you do you think that would work? Um, you know, and do you also think that the CBN may have tried that and realized that that wasn't, you know, working? Oh well. Um Will it work? Yes, it will work because everybody that sees that there is sanction and some people have been sanctioned and they are bearing the brunt for being sanctioned will put their operations in order. It's the same thing that happens in banks. CBN sees that some banks are culpable of some things. They call them to order, they sanction them, and other banks put their books right. So it's the same thing that happens. Nobody wants to be caught out of business. Nobody wants their source of livelihood to be taken out of them just like that. So if truly they are being sanctioned, if it has been happening and, there's been and they are being sanctioned and people can see, they can find evidence to the fact that companies, BDCs, operators are being sanctioned, then everybody will follow suit and make sure that their books are, are, are put in, in order. Okay, um, can you share an example, um, before we move to uh, you know, other angles, can you share an example of um, you know, what you mean by you know, being fraudulent with this, you know, and, you know, participating or, in, in, you know, engaging in fraudulent um, FX transactions. Um, there is, I believe, a maximum limit of trading that a BDC can in involve in daily. Um, are you saying that there are some of them that were going way higher than, you know, what the limit was? Okay, so um, based on the guidelines from CBN, BDCs are supposed to, from the funds that they get from CBN, the funds that BDCs get from CBN, you're supposed to use the funds for PTAs, for business travel allowance, BTA, for medical fees, for school tuition. You're not supposed to go above a limit of um, 4,000 for personal travel allowance and $5,000 for business travel allowance. That is what that money is meant for. Ordinarily, if you are to do a transaction outside of the funds that is it's coming from CBN, you're not supposed to do anything more than 10,000 per transaction. That is what the BDC operation. So you can have like um, five different people come to you in a day, but you're not supposed to go above those limits in dealing with them. Otherwise, the transactions become um, suspicious and they are thrown open for investigation by the body, by, by CBN. So exactly what, what CBN wants is BDC should abide by those rules. There are some people that have been caught, there are some organizations that they think are, are, are doing things that are outside of that, but you find them and then you, you put them in order. You put them in order. That is what I think from my own hand. 
Okay, um, the, uh, the uh, guest I had earlier um, uh, this morning had mentioned that he believed that it was a great policy and this was one way to stabilize the Naira. Instead of having you know foreign exchange being marketed across the whole country, you can really just limit the amount of people who have it. And of course, that is you know pushing it to just commercial banks, um, have better policies regulating it and all of that. So don't you see that as a positive to this? Okay, good. CBN has very good intentions, okay? The, the intention is very good. But are we right for it yet? I don't think so. It's a very good policy. If CBN wants um, users of FX to get it from the bank, then fine. However, are we right for it yet as a country? No, I don't think so. If I might state, um, the, current, the current solution that CBN is given right now still looks very short-term in nature. In nature. Okay, we have not addressed the issue of supply as it were yet, because I think that is where the problem is. The supply into the country, you see that over time, CBN has brought in so many policies to encourage people to um, inflow forex down into the country. And that is the issue we need to address for, for now. Um, the Nigeria is not generating enough revenue at the moment to take care of its own expenses. And you will see every day, um, um, for example, the foreign direct investment recently was said to have reduced by about $1 million. That is extra $1 million that would have come into the economy and um, would have gone in circulation for what we need to do. If you can give me a little bit of time to expand a little bit on this, um, we will see that there is reduced income from uh, CBN has tried in so many ways to encourage remittances of FX into the country with laudable policies, yes. which... Um, some of them have been good, some of them have encouraged inflows of FX, but still it is not enough. Nigeria as a country is still a net importer. We do more of imports than exports in the country, ranging from raw materials to finished goods. The question then arises, as a government, um, are we exporting enough? Are we encouraging our local manufacturers? Are we encouraging our local companies to export out of the country? What is the quality of goods that we're exporting out of the country? Is it... Um, is, is it a, our, our goods that we're exporting out of the country? Can they stand side by side with other similar goods out there um, outside Nigeria? Have we created an enabling environment enough to favor the production of such goods? Those are things that we can do to encourage inflow of efforts into the country. As a country, there needs to be a clear direction, a vision that everyone can see in a glancing thought of where we are headed, what we need to do from top to bottom in achieving these goals. Look at this policy, for example. Yes, we know that this is what CBN wants the banks to do, but there is still no clear direction as to how to go about it, even for the ordinary citizen. You go to a bank today, you tell them that you need um, dollars, you need FX, and they will tell you to come back tomorrow that they don't have enough. As CBN equipped the banks enough to be able to meet clients' demands, those are questions that we still need to ask ourselves. If you look at other countries, for example, the, 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 you know, when the governor was talking about um, it is only in Nigeria that they release um, FX to BDCs. You look at other countries, for example, BDCs don't even need to rely on the government. And we ask ourselves what those other countries are doing for BDCs not to rely on the government. Are we doing it here? In other climes, the major source of FX comes through tourism. Look at Maldives, look at Seychelles, look at um, Dubai, look at even London, Etro. The volume of people that enter into the Etro airport on a daily basis is enough to generate FX. If you have about 4 million people coming into this country every day with $4,000 each, you can imagine how much that will be on a daily basis amounting into inflow of forex coming into the country. Those are things we need to do. We are looking at the tourism um, atmosphere in Nigeria and we are saying, have we done enough? Have we done enough? In terms of exporting other goods outside the country, have we done enough? Then one good thing that I also like to state here is this. I think CBN has not realized, you know, the, the issue here is about supervision and monitoring and um, regulating the BDC activities. Has CBN realized enough the power that lies within technology to really curtail and do this thing very well? So there are things that could be done internally, simple things that could be done internally with respect to supervision and the controlling the operations of BDCs via e-channels, technology, that can curtail the activities of these BDCs. Yeah. We cannot keep on working ordinary and expecting 
be extraordinary to happen for a country as diverse and multi-talented as ours. I think there are so many things we look at and not just creating the policies which so looks a little bit short-termish in nature. Let me take a pause there. Okay. All right, Mr. Balogun, next question would be the um, effects that this might have. Uh, we've seen in the last 48 hours uh, the exchange rate rise as high as 522 naira to a dollar. Um, so, so is that one of the effects that you know sh we should be worried about? Uh, is there a possibility that it will continue to rise? Okay, uh, the initial hike, the spike you've seen in the rate is as a result of um, speculation. Like I said when I was talking earlier, everybody needs to have a clear direction. You need to know what what is expected, what the CBN is trying to drive at. At the moment, the as as much as the BDC operators are panicking, they don't know what to expect from the policies. Even consumers who are panicking, they are not sure where what direction CBN is headed, because consumers bear this brunt at the end of the day. Like I said earlier, when you go to the bank and you ask, for example, for PTA sometimes, you're supposed to get 4000 and the bank is telling you drop your documents, come back in two days' time, um, and then you go back in two days' time, maybe the bank is giving you like $1,500 instead of 4000 and they tell you that that's all they can give you because there are so many people on the queue they have to serve and the money is not enough to go around the queue. So they ration it out for customers and consumers alike. Um, so everybody is scared. If I go to the bank today, will I get FX? Will I get the dollar? So if I have to go to the BDC, let me go to the BDC. BDC is looking at it. I have limited supply. From this limited supply, do I know if it's enough to cater for the number of people that is going to come in? And you know what happens in economics? Once the demand is very high and supply is very low, automatically the rates, the prices are affected. So what you've seen recently is just like a spike that is as a result of speculation and um, it need to have a clear direction as to the policy. However, um, in the long term, the forces of demand and supply will come into place. And when the direction is a little bit clearer, we can all know, okay, good, this is where the, Lara, the Naira is going to land in terms of its strength against the dollar, for example. So in the long term, first of all, demand and supply will come into play. And that, has what, that is what has always driven the parallel market, the forces of demand and supply. When demands are high, you go to the parallel market, you see that um, the rates are high. There, are sometimes, there was a time CBN was giving um, BDCs quite some influence, which is more than what they were given before this recent ban. And what happened then, most businesses were making losses because the, de the supply was so high and it overshadowed the demand. So much so that businesses were closing down operations. Back then, businesses were closing down operations because they were running at a loss. And it's not just that businesses come today and they say that this is what we want to do. Okay, they agree that today we want to sell dollar at 550. And everybody goes like a bandwagon and say my dollar is 550. No, it responds basically to market forces. So yeah. when the supply is high, you see that rates go low in the BDC market. When demand is high, the rates spike up a bit in the BDC market. It's just basic, basic um, forces of demand and supply. And over time, I believe that this will come into place once there is a direction from the CBN policy, what they intend to do and what they intend not to do, and everybody will know where the Naira really is. All right, so there's also a possibility it might even go higher, depending on how this turns out. Um, oh, well, so let, let me give you an example. Sorry, I hope, um, I hope I still have enough time to talk about this. Yeah, Sometime but, in yeah. Um, but, okay. but but I, I want to I want to you know quickly be, I'm, I'm sure you still have a little bit to say but I want you to respond to this also there's the conspiracy theories that I've said because of the lack of control that you mentioned um, that you know banks will simply sell to BDCs BDCs then will you know of course you know from the back sell to uh, consumers and that will you know make the the, the um, exchange rate continue to even go higher because everybody needs to make some profit. Um, do you see that as a possibility? Oh, well, like you said, it's a conspiracy theory. <laughs> um, I really don't have <laughs> so much idea about what goes on in the background. And um, I'm not that well connected to, <laughs> to give you um, a factual response with respect to that. If it's a conspiracy theory, let's leave it. But at the end of the day, uh, whether the theory is true or not, like I said, it will always bear its um, effect on the market. That's when you see where the rate lands at the end of the day. Whatever thing that happens at the background um, will always come to the forefront at the end of the day to determine what the rates 
what the rates will be. I was going to say something earlier with respect to that. Um, sometime 2016, something like this happened when there was a ban from CBN. Yes. And before the ban happened, before the ban happened, um, dollar was at about um, 270, 65, 70 thereabouts. At the end of the day, because of the shortage of demand, banks couldn't meet the demand from clients, from the citizens alike. And then they had to, the pressure was so much on the bank and they had to fall back on the parallel market. When they fell back on the parallel market, because the parallel market, the BDCs and so, they had little supply. Demand was high, rates went up. And at the end of the day, when CBN was going to realize that this thing needs to be reversed because we are not yet right for it. Rates had already gone as high as 495 Naira from about 270 Naira within the space of about 10, 11 months. 10, 11 months. Yes. We are looking at an increase of about close to 50%. So I hope that does not happen at this time and at and this time and age where things are not so easy for the common citizen. Things are not so Everybody is trying to put in things that can end them a source of livelihood. I hope that does not happen because the resultant effect of that is if it happens then even the tomato seller in the market will tell you that ah oh guy you know see how much they sell dollar now everything goes up inflation and everything so i hope cbn has just put in a lot of things at the background to ensure that um the effects the negative effects that might come from this are, are being curtailed yeah, well, on, well, we have seen, you know, similar knee-jerk reactions um, a lot of times, you know, in, in Nigeria. So um, hopefully, like you've said, you know, they've put in uh, the checks and balances. There's one of the stories that we shared in the news this morning, and that is from bank CEOs who met and said they are ready and they will be able to handle it. Uh, sh should Nigerians trust those statements? Well, <laughs> the statement is just coming out. Nigerians can be at ease whatever happens is that what cbn is trying to do let me put this straight what cbn is trying to do is at the interest of every nigerian what the bank ceos are trying to do is at the interest of every nigerian what bdc's have been preaching is at the interest of every nigerian i can tell you for a fact that before this came up before the ban came up the association of the route the change um, um operators in nigeria I've met with CBN time and over again to see how these rates can be reduced. So we can't just say that the BDCs are the bad eggs. The BDCs are also trying to look for what can be done to reduce the rates. So what everybody is working on is at the interest of every Nigerian. However, the approach from every angle, from every industry might be different. The way we are looking at it, the way bank, the bank CEOs are looking at it, the way CBN is looking at it might be different. And there needs to be a convergence of ideas. You can't just take out a key stakeholder and then say that you are ready to work with another key stakeholder. Everybody automatically, as much as we want the interest of every Nigerian, would also try to protect his own interests because that is why we exist as companies. So whatever the bank CEOs are doing to ensure that these needs are being met, fine, as long as it works in the interest of every Nigerian. But what I would like to say also is that we have undermined in nigeria so much so we've undermined the power of technology um in my company for example we put in a lot in technology to see how we can reduce the effects of the shortage of this supply in the in the in circulation and if we can come together and find each channel through which it is easy to pass money from one place to the other legitimately which technology can achieve you don't have to send in paper documents here and there we have the bvn we have so many things going on for us that we can work with so it's not just easy to say uh, i was trying to talk to someone yesterday and i was saying it's not just easy to say that because a baby is crying from headache you cut off the head okay <laughs> yes it's a solution to cut off the head the baby will stop crying automatically and the baby okay. will stop to exist however <laughs> there are better solutions to cutting off the head <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, um, you're, you're, um, uh, you mentioned you're a BDC operator, so I want to, um, you know, ask what, you know, next, you know, for the thousands of them across the country that seem to have been put out of business, um, what, what does, you know, what are the conversations like in those spaces? Okay, so for, for BDCs, what I can tell you for, for sure is BDCs, the ban has not, the ban is on the release of FX from CBN to BDCs. It has not stopped BDC operations, 
Okay, I can tell you for a fact that BDCs will always have a way to source for FX from the normal consumer out there that wants to buy one hundred dollar, five hundred dollar, yeah. wants to exchange somebody that is just traveling into the country has some small stipends on him or her. There will still be ways in which we can source FX from one consumer to the other. Okay, um, the supply is low. The supply will definitely reduce because one of the major sources of supply is from the CBN. So if, for example, somebody goes to the bank now and is unable to get his PTA or his PTA complete or a medical fee or school tuition complete, the person still has to fall back to the BDC to see how we can augment to make sure that such demands uh, are, are being met. So there will, so there will always be business for the BDC as long as their licenses are not revoked yet. They can still operate. Um, it's 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 my, it's like removing the engine. What yeah. is happening to the BDC to the BDC now is like removing the engine of their operations. But uh, one way or the other, the work will still go on. And yes, the the the, the volume might be reduced, but work will still go on. One way or the other, I'm going to ask you two final questions. The first one, I'm not sure if you would uh, want to speak on this, but um, can you share with us uh, from your time as a you know, as an operator? Do you think that there are tiny loopholes here and there through which BDC operators can get um, 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 from uh, the banks now and still sell. Do you think those loopholes still exist in our system? Um, like I said, I said something when we were starting this discussion. I said Nigeria is not right for some things yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, CBN has tried to put in a lot of guidelines, restrictions, with respect to BDC operations. And yet CBN is still coming out to say that some BDCs have been found wanting with respect to meeting the, uh, the, the ropes of the guideline. Some have been found in, as, uh, as being conduit for illicit funds yes. and so on and so forth. So despite all this that has been put in, um, some people are still, some operators are still doing what is not expected of them. It's just like that. So have we done anything to make sure that what they were doing is being curtailed now? I don't think we've put that in place. So even if the thing is going to the banks, um, the same way it was done before, it might still continue like that. So, and that is why I said it's like having a view. You, you have a building. The building, the structure, there's a structural defect. You can't just remove the roofing sheet yeah. and say that the building is okay. Okay, there has to be some work that is being done at the foundational base to make sure that some things are being cut out to prevent such occurrences later in the future. No matter how much you paint the building, the structural defects will still be there. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if you can, in um, a minute or less, uh, share with us once again ideas the CBN or the Nigerian government should be able to adopt to increase the inflow of Forex into Nigeria. Um, we seem to not put in too much effort into that. There's so many, so many um, ways that this could be done. Okay. Um, I stated a few things earlier which I would like to retreat on. Yeah. The first is with respect to tourism. Tourism is, you see African countries that don't have any resources and they've worked on tourism and every, everybody from every country wants to go there to even have a visit. You're going to such countries most people, if you're going with your family, four thousand is not even in four thousand dollars is not even enough for you to go with your family. By the time you look at hotel expenses, you go there, you don't want to spend three days. You're looking at spending about a week or yeah. close to two weeks. Hotel expenses, accommodation, feeding. You have to go to tourist attraction, tourist attraction centers. You have to pay to be able to use any of the facilities. You look at it, and then you find out that people don't even just go to one country nowadays. So you see somebody, for example, going to a country like um, Singapore. And then you go to Dubai first in transit. You spend a few days in Dubai transit before you go to Singapore. You spend some days in Singapore. And then on your way back, maybe you're coming through another country like... Tourism is one area we need to look at. The government needs to be able to designate some places in Nigeria, some states in Nigeria, some key areas in Nigeria that would be good for tourist attraction. That is number one. Number two, um, what goods are we manufacturing out there? We have the crude oil. Apart from the crude oil, what else is Nigeria known for in the global space for um, exports that can stand out? You see, there was a time the government was curtailing the importation of um, things as small as toothpick. 
toothpick. Yes. If there, there's a country that is producing that toothpick and is sending it to us in Nigeria. But I can tell you for sure that even the toothpick we produce in Nigeria today is not of the standard and quality of the toothpick that we're importing. So if we export our own toothpick, is there any country that is willing to buy from us? We need to look at the quality of the goods that we produce there. So there are so wow. many areas we can look at and say that Nigeria needs to do better as a country. Okay. Like I said earlier, there is a place for ambitioning. We need to be ambition ourselves and let it run through the mind of every citizen. That at a glance, I can say that this is what Nigeria stands for and this is where Nigeria is headed towards. All right. Ayodele Balogu, thank you so much for your time this morning. Interesting conversation. And uh, we look forward to speaking with you again. I hope I've not spoken too much. Thank oh, yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. All right, stay with us here on The Breakfast. Uh, we're now going to be speaking with Ibrahim Oshinowo. He's a risk management expert. And Ose Aneni, they're joining us uh, next to speak on the reconciliation between Atiku Abubakar and Nyesum Wiki and what this means um, for the strength of the PDP as an opposition party and, of course, for 2023. That comes up right next after the short break.